Hey guys, welcome to the video. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can create our own neon lights. I'm gonna show you two different methods. One, we're gonna be using a kind of like text-based neon light, so something like this, where you can actually use your favorite font to create neon lights. And then the second one, which is actually a bit, a bit more tricky and a bit more fiddly, but I think it produces a really cool result. We're actually gonna hand draw our own neon lights and whack them into SketchUp and render them out in V-Ray. So this is gonna be a video on SketchUp and V-Ray today. Uh, I'm gonna show you now some of the examples of the renders that I produced using these methods, uh, and hopefully you like them, and then we're gonna get into how to do it for yourself. Okay, so I've just opened up a brand new model in SketchUp and I'm gonna be running through the first method um, first. Initially, I mean, you can keep your little person in here. I like to leave them in the model for reference. But what we're gonna be using today is the 3D text tool. Now, if this isn't displaying on your toolbar, uh, you should be able to find it under tools. And if you come down to 3D text, it should have it there. So I'm just gonna click once here. And basically we get to enter whatever text we want. So for this, I'm gonna Use designer Jake as my example still. Uh, designer, and I'm going to press enter and then put Jake. Now I'm going to put my height to, I guess let's do it 500. And then let's just do it filled. Let's, we're not going to extrude it, we're going to keep it as a flat object. And I'm just going to click place. So I can just place this on the floor like that. So it's great. So basically, what we are now going to do is create a cylinder that follows all of these paths and that's going to be our neon light but to do that i'm actually going to go into this group and i'm first of all going to just delete these faces because we're not going to use these so now they're all deleted and what i'm going to do is just grab the circle tool i press c on my keyboard and then i'm going to make sure i'm on the right axis so i want to be on the green axis i want to be perpendicular to the the main lines that i'm going to be uh, tracing around so about here and then i'm going to click once and I'm going to put the radius at 5mm and I think this does work best but you can play with it, you can make it a bit thicker or a bit skinnier depending on what logo or what text you're turning into a neon light. So with that done, what I'm then going to do is just double click on the outer line uh, like so and then I'm just going to click on the follow me tool and then click once on my cylinder and we've created a a cylindrical path that follows the outline of our D. So basically what I will then do is then repeat this through all of my letters until you get all of those in this kind of cylinder form. Um, so I'll just show you again quickly. So I'm gonna grab my circle tool, gonna make sure I'm perpendicular to the line. So I'm on the green axis there. I'm gonna do five mil. And I'm gonna double click on this line, click on the follow me tool and follow me like that. So that's the basic principle initially. So now I'm gonna do the rest of these and I'll come back in a second and show you what I've done. So I've just completed the same process on the rest of the letters. And you can see this is the result that we've got. There may be a few kind of clipping issues with your letters depending on what kind of font you used, but these shouldn't be too much of a problem. Just if there's anything that really obvious that looks terrible, just make sure you delete it or delete it on the actual line work itself before you then use the follow me tool to create the cylinder shape. Uh, I've actually just adjusted it as well slightly. So I moved the Jake to the left hand side and I also scaled it down uh, a little bit because I think it was actually too big when I first laid it. So now we've got that, we're now gonna basically make it light up. Now to do this, we're gonna go into V-Ray. So I'm gonna open up V-Ray now and we'll start creating our own material. So now we're in V-Ray and I'm in the materials tab within the asset editor of V-Ray. And what we're gonna do is create a new material. So I'm gonna click this little icon here, go to materials, and then we're gonna go on emissive. Now, if we use this little arrow here, that will show us our properties of our material. At the moment, we've just got this generic white emissive light, which is good, that's what we kind of want. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to change the color of it so we can see it when I apply it. So I'm going to change it to, uh, let's just do like a light blue, like that. And now when I click on the material and then apply it to my um, neon area, you'll see that it's fully covered 
and that's because it's in its own group and the whole object is grouped as one. So that's how we apply the emissive layer. Now when you see neon lights they normally are hanging on a wall so what we're going to do now is just build a wall and then position this in place and then we're going to run a render and see what it's looking like. So to build a simple wall all I'm going to do is grab a rectangle get up like this and we're going to just draw a rectangle like so I'm going to group that and then I'm going to push pull that one up like that and now I'm just going to reposition my neon sign um, we can actually get rid of our lady friend there, we'll get rid of her. Flip this like that. Flip this 90 degrees again. And then I'm going to position it on my wall. And then all I'm going to do is just move it off the wall about 30 mil. Just to leave a gap between the actual neon sign and the wall. So you're going to see the light reflect onto the wall. And we can just make sure we have the emissive layer at the right intensity. What I'm going to do now is just, I'm going to go back into V-Ray and I'm actually just going to turn off our skylight. So if you go to the light section, you'll see our sunlight here, which is automatically on when you create a new model and you open up V-Ray, you'll have a sunlight turned on. And what we're going to do is just turn it off. So to do that, you just click on this little sun icon or you've got this uh, little toggle here and we're just going to turn it off. Now I'm going to make sure my render settings aren't too high so it's nothing too crazy there. Just a basic render but we're just essentially going to see how bright our light is and see if we need to adjust the intensity at all if it's too intense or it's not intense enough so here we go i'm going to run a render and i'll show you what it looks like in a second just one more thing before you run that first render the sunlight may be off but you might still get uh, an environment around it and what we need to do is actually go into the settings and if you come down to the environment tab you basically want to turn off this background um, toggle and essentially that is the light that comes from the kind of HDRI I guess so make sure that's turned off and then you run your render and it will be complete darkness apart from your your logo so here we have it here's a really simple render and you can see yeah our light is working we are emitting light from our text and it's pushing onto the wall and you can see that from this kind of diffused light obviously this is a low quality render and you can up the render quality as you see fit but that is basically how you create a neon material and how you apply it to some kind of text in your 3D model. Now in the starting renders what you probably saw is that I had a wall texture, uh, sorry a brick wall texture and I think that works really well with neon lights as I think you want to see a bit of the texture behind the neon light. So to do that all I did was go into the materials library in V-Ray and then I'm pretty sure I used uh, it's this one here I believe, Bricks Weathered, so I'm just going to add that to scene and it says we should have it at one meter so I'm going to just type in a thousand and then I'm going to apply that to our wall and then let me just move this a bit, a bit more centrally and what I also might do is I might turn on our sunlight again but this time I'm just going to reduce the intensity to something really low just so you can kind of see the outskirts of the wall and then what I also might do is just up the intensity slightly of our neon light you'll see that when you are up the intensity the color kind of changes a bit because it's getting more intense the the vibrance of the color and the hue is is changing so just be aware of that when you pick and adjust your intensity I'm going to run another render of that and see what that looks like so that render is just completed and you can kind of see the texture of the wall behind it I think it looks really cool. Now there's a few more details you can add to your neon lights to make them even more realistic. So you might have seen in the original renders that I showed you at the start of the video. I basically had kind of uh, mounting points which go onto the wall and to do that I just used, created a little cylinder with another circle on it and just scattered them around the neon sign. So that just makes it a little bit more realistic. I also added a cable from the bottom left hand side, so around this J area cable hanging down and that also adds to the realism uh, of the neon lights now another thing you can do is you can use lens effects within v-ray now to do that what i do is i just click on lens effects and then click enable bloom and glare and you want to up the intensity a bit and what i normally tick on is lens scratches so that's going to give you this kind of kind of diffused effect and that's more realistic and more like to a a real life photo which is important for our renders you can see that looks pretty good um, I might you can see there's quite a few variations of the types of scratches that you can get on your on your lens 
um, but I think random is probably the best. You can up the size and intensity of that. Uh, but obviously you don't want to go overboard because otherwise it start look, looking a bit uh, fake really. Um, and you want to try and make it look real. So that's the basics of using a font to create a neon sign. And I've showed you the follow me tool where you can create a cylinder and follow the path of your text. And then you will get something like this. Then it is a question of playing with uh, any of these settings in V-Ray. Uh, adding any details which I might show you um, in the next part which I'm going to show you how to create the more hand-drawn neon lights. So to create the hand-drawn neon light effect and I recommend doing this because if you google neon lights you'll see that neon lights are rarely kind of full closed loops they are kind of just individual lines and segments so I thought the hand-drawn um, part of this creates a far more realistic result. Uh, now my handwriting is not the best and I wasn't very good at writing designer Jake but I think it looks cool, it looks kind of quirky so I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. What you need to do initially is just grab a piece of paper and just write down what you want your neon sign to say. Now just take a photo on your phone, um, so if you've got a smartphone just snap a photo of that and then send it to your PC or send it to your desktop, however you want to do that is fine. And then we're basically just going to import it into SketchUp. Now to import your photo in SketchUp, you're going to go to File, Import, and find your photo, click on it, and just import it as an image, that's fine. And then click once, and then you can scale it to however big you, you feel, and I'll probably leave it like that. Now, what I also like to do is, uh, I'll just explode this, and then if I grab this material, I'm just going to turn the opacity down a little bit, because I think sometimes you want to see your lines as you draw them, so I think turning that down is quite a good way of doing it. I'll regroup it again so it doesn't get in the way when I'm drawing. And essentially what we're going to do is trace around our, our text. Um, to do that we're just going to use the line tool and probably the arc tool a lot of the time. So I'll, just, I'll just show you an example on the D. So I'm just going to draw a line and then we probably want to start using the curve tool now. So you want to kind of make this look as natural as you can. So yeah, using the arc is probably your best bet. And I'm making sure that it's kind of... Oh, sometimes you'll get that issue, you run into that issue. Um, but yeah, you just want to make it as smooth as possible and make sure you're on the flat face. So you might end up drawing off the flat face and that'll be a bit of a problem later. But you can always go back and change it. So yeah, I'm just going to do the D like that. And then we've got this kind of curly bit at the end. So if I put it to about there. And then finish up there. So that's the D. And then what you do is you just go along all of your text and draw, trace around it, essentially, using the line and the arc tool. And then what we're going to do is do the same thing as before. We're going to draw a circle. Now, it's kind of hard to get it completely not, uh, perpendicular to your line. So you might have to have a play with that as well because sometimes it won't be perpendicular and you'll get this kind of slanty tube. You won't get a, a nice clean tube. So that is a bit of a tricky, difficult thing with this. But if you take your time, you'll be able to make something that looks pretty, pretty damn good. I'm gonna do the same as before. I'm gonna draw a five mil radius circle. Select my line, click the follow me tool and click once and we should have our D um, complete. Now you can either hide this or whatever and then you do obviously all of your words and then you'll get a finished handwritten neon sign. So I just want to show you the extra little elements that I added to my neon sign uh, to make it look a little bit more realistic. So first I added these little mounting points. Now these are really basic. Um, you can see what they are. They're just like a little cylinder with another cylinder on top and yeah i just positioned them where i thought they would be so they're going to act as support for the for the neon lights now obviously a real neon light is actually all connected so you would get areas where these connect but i haven't done that and i mean if you want to do that you could it's just going to take a little bit more time also when it comes to the material um here are my settings at the moment sometimes what i i will do is i'll add a reflective coat over the top of it now you probably won't notice this, but I think it adds something. It adds um, a bit of reflection to your neon light. So if you get any areas that aren't as lit up for whatever reason, you're going to get that reflection. So I add that as well. I mean, you don't have to, but I think it is 
you know, it makes it look a little bit more real. And then the other thing that I added was the, the cable. So now to do this cable, you can essentially do the same thing as before. You create a little path, do a follow me on a, uh, a circle and you'll create a cable. And then, yeah, it's just positioning it uh, in place. I did add those cars um, in my, some of my renders because I thought it would be cool to have the neon lights reflecting off, say, the front of a car or something like that. I think putting something in the foreground gives you an understanding of scale and like perspective, which I think is really important for renders. And these cars are within the Chaos Cosmos library, so if you use the Chaos Cosmos library, there's a whole load of assets in there um, which you can just download and bring into your model and they've got amazing textures on them. So that basically covers how to create neon lights in your V-Ray. Uh, now, in terms of the settings, so if you go into your into the V-Ray frame buffer, these are the settings I have on mine at the moment. I sometimes also use um, the depth of field within the V-Ray render to get a bit of depth of field so some, some of the uh, lights and the edges will be out of focus um, but normally I just keep it pretty standard and you get some effects like this which I think look you know they look really cool. So hopefully that is clear and it's a pretty simple video on how to create neon lights in SketchUp and V-Ray but if you're interested in learning anything else to do with SketchUp check out my YouTube channel I've got loads of quick little videos on there. If you're looking for some more comprehensive videos, uh, please check out my Skillshare. I've got some really good courses on there. So if you're a complete beginner at V-Ray or SketchUp, or if you're intermediate at V-Ray or SketchUp, I've got some great videos over there. And they're still running the one month free if you use my link to sign up, and that'll be down below, along with all my lessons over on Skillshare. It really helps me out when you watch those lessons, um, and I really appreciate all the support and feedback I've had uh, over the past few years actually um, it's been really good feedback so I'm happy that you guys enjoy them other than that subscribe to the YouTube channel it's growing I'm gonna get more consistent and produce some cool videos that I hopefully you will enjoy so thanks for watching have a good day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next video peace